Alrighty guys, welcome back. We are older, we are wiser. Most of us have probably seen the gameplay at least a little bit from the JP servers and the JP players. Uh, so, and we have the batch nodes in English. So uh, obviously that's happening today in the next couple of hours. So I thought I'd just quickly run over the patch notes uh, again, just because, just see if there's anything different and I can probably understand a little bit more now that we're in English. Uh, Cause I don't know about you guys, but my Japanese is a little bit, uh, a little bit rough. Um, cool. So as we all know, uh, New Year's Festival is kind of basically coming to an end, right? I've done a video on everything you want to be doing in the next, well, it was a few days ago, so hopefully you've done it all, but you've got a couple of hours to, to go through and get it all done, so make sure you do that as well. Um, so this is finishing up 6 p.m. PST, which I think is somewhere around three, four, five hours time, something like that. Um, so yeah, we've also got the New hero, which we'll get to shortly, and then we've got the chapter six update, right? So I'm really excited for the new Ragnarok. Uh, I think it's Fear or, or Tear. He looks awesome, the God of Fire. Uh, really keen to see him some of his animations. Uh, I will be doing a run through video of this chapter, like I do with all chapters. So we'll get to go through and we'll get to see him, um, and we'll be able to have a bit of fun. Looks like there's a few gnomes and stuff here, which is kind of sick. Um, so yeah, really excited for this. A whole bunch of stuff is actually looks like it's happening, and as we've just talked about, it has, is happening. So that's really cool. We obviously have uh, new uh, Simp Queen <laughs> Freya. Uh, she's her character design's wild, but anyway, um, she looks cool from the gameplay and stuff that I've seen. Um, she does look like a lot of fun to play, and she obviously works very well in the Ragnarok team, which we'll get into in a bit more detail soon. Uh, and I will kind of say whether I'm going to be summoning for her or not. Um, so cool, so we've got the, the new content, we've got the Land of Legends chapter, Nedavilia. Um, so basically we get to complete chapter 5, which will give you another 30 gems, it should do from memory. Um, so that'll be really, really cool. Uh, and then we'll get stuck into a new chapter as well. Looks like we do also get uh, a new artifact card, which is really nice, uh, just to add to either you know, CC or uh, whatever, and there's some new records added to Grimnir's book. So hopefully this means another diamond. I think from memory, those books usually, every time you like watched one or listened to one, um, you got a diamond from it. So hopefully a couple of extra cheeky diamonds for us all. Um, but of course, I mean, this is mainly what I'm super excited for and what maybe you guys are for as well. Uh, I have, I'll be honest, I haven't really done a lot of research into Nidhogger yet. Uh, I have done what teams and stuff I need. I don't know uh, if I've got the right characters built, but we will definitely be um, definitely be giving this a red hot go in the next couple of days, just with whatever team I can, you know, kind of scrap together for it. I'm hoping I've got a somewhat okay team for it, but I guess we'll find out. Um, and then the four new holy relics, which again I'm, I'm super keen for, especially Festival King or Chad King or Quiffy King or whatever you want to call them. Um, I think this is going to be a really fun relic to use, especially in PVE for. For, you know farming and also for uh, for cheesing dogs as well um, so yeah we've got Fraudrum, we've got Zeldris, we've got Melascula and we've got uh, King I can only really remember what these two do but we'll go into we'll go into more details a little bit later um, so Demonic Beast Battle obviously unlocks after you've cleared chapter 13 which you guys will hopefully have done or if you haven't then you'll get there and you'll be able to do it um, but this is very end game content right uh, Demonic Beast this stuff is very very late game uh, you you know I still can't properly do dogs and I think I've got like a five and a half mil box CC and I've completed everything else in the game pretty much so um, this is potentially going to be painful for me but we'll see how we go um, this is also really cool so after the maintenance, the demonic, the, the demonic uh, rewards will reset. So make sure you've done like your clears uh, on your whether you're doing deer or bird or or um, uh, dogs or you know whatever it is you're doing. Make sure you've done your clears so you get the maximum challenge rewards because um, they will reset again, and you'll be able to get double. You'll be able to double down. So definitely make sure you're doing that. Uh, I know I have a couple of friends that that don't do that on time. So definitely do that so you guys can can maximize that. So. Um, Demonic Beasts, uh, this is interesting. Demonic Beasts, Nigo's passive do not, Nidhogger's passive does not stack between floors. Instead, the passive is applied for each floor individually. So it means that they're not, like, you don't get multiple, multiple, multiple passives as you go along, which is very interesting. So I wonder how 
broken the passives is. Uh, like I said, I haven't really done any research into this boss. I haven't seen any of the passives or the gimmicks or anything like that yet. So once I do, uh, and once I can beat it, you know, consistently, I'll obviously bring you guys out a guide as well as a Skull and Hardy guide. I'm getting there. Um, I kind of got to get ahead of myself. I knew I could do Bird and Deer, but I'm, I'm still a little bit behind on Skull and Hardy, and obviously this one I'll have to see. So, um, looks cool. I'm looking forward to seeing, like, it looks like there's different stages. Um, so that's going to be good fun. Uh, like, different stages, of course, there's different stages, but, like, different transformations. Um, so keen to see that. Um, but, yeah, so that, that's going to be interesting as well. Uh, obviously these are the holy relic mats, um, so you've got the actual main source which is the root of corruption, roots corruption, and then you've got the dark crystal, a crystal that you need to get as well. So uh, these will be what you need to do to build these holy relics going forward, as well as the usual um, holy relic squares, for lack of a better term, or cubes, and then also the um, the little pieces of, of the puzzle or pie or whatever you guys want to call them. Um, can't think of the name of them off the top of my head. Um, at achievements for clearing Corpse Fera, cool stories related to them will be released in future updates, cool, so we'll get an understanding of what this demonic beast actually is and all that kind of stuff, which is good, um, so you can go into achievements, add a demonic beast, Twilight will be where it is, okay, so yeah, now this is, now basically it's, it's farmable, right, Skull and Hardy is going to be farmable, which is always the way they do it, they do it so that, you know, then when the next one comes out, the previous one is farmable. So for all those that can farm Skull and Hardy, which honestly I don't know is if, if that's a lot of you guys, it's still not an easy boss, uh, unless that's just me and I'm not that bright. Uh, but it's still, you know, for yeah the top 5-10%, it's super easy because they're all whales and they all, you know, or they all have, you know, already got a couple of relics and stuff, but it's it's still, still pretty difficult. But this is good to hear. Um, so once we all get to that stage, we'll be able to farm it. Um, the corrupt piece will be added to the exchange shop, which is memory of heavens. Yep, makes sense. Like the other one, right? Because um, the other one, the the first one has the wind and river source, and then the next one will have the uh, dogs and the this one source as well. I can't remember the name of those ones. Um, cool. Again, we've got the new costumes, right? This is for uh, obviously the new Freya. Um, they you know that like this. This is the one that everyone seems to be rocking. I wonder why. Uh, they know what they're doing when they're designing these. That's for sure. They're not stupid. They know their target audience. Um, but obviously, these guys will give extra stats, and you can purchase them. I think they'll, they'll be probably thirty diamonds, or you know, you can buy them. Actually, what does it say? Set purchase period, individual costume purchase price, ongoing. I guess you better get these with diamonds. Ah, oh, there you go. Costumes with plus thirty diamonds. There you go. Um, or you can just buy them out, right? Cool. Uh, this is the card set that you'll get from... Okay, cool. So you'll get it from the event boss. There's a new event boss coming. That's cool. Uh, oh, returning. Event boss returns Gloom. So I think it's a returning one. I um, can't remember what that one is. Ragnarok bingo event. Uh, cool. And then step up mission event. So you guys, I believe, you guys can all do these pretty straightforwardly. And decrease allies damage taken from enemies by up to 10%. If an ally with a Ragnarok character is alive on the battlefield. Okay, so as long as you've got a, a Ragnarok hero on the field, you'll be good. Uh, this is probably only really run, obviously, with a Ragnarok team. There'll be other better card sets, I would guess, uh, if you're just running, you know, Freya as, a, as an addition. Um, cool, and then you've got the card drop rewards for Skull and Hardy, the UR ones. This is exciting, because this hopefully means we're going to get a new, like, broken card set. Right, because the other ones, like the deer one and the bird one, they're all related to the demonic beast card sets, which is like the single target damage and then the increase in basic stats as well, right? So hopefully this means we're going to get a card set that makes dogs easier and the new the demonic beast, um, Nidho, Nidhogga, Nid, I'm just going to call it Nidho, Nidho works. <laughs> um... Nidho easier, um, so I think that's good. that'll be nice. So once that starts to come out as well, um, and then we have the new holy relics. Okay, I really keen for this. Like I said, I'm always very keen for Chad King. Increases as you guys know, increases the hero's damage dealt by 15%, then increases basic stats of allies protected by the hero's barrier by 15%. I'm interested to see how this basic stat pieces work. I think maybe defense and attack is going to be the main ones because I have a sneaky suspicion that 
that hero's stats that's within the shield has an effect on how quickly the shield breaks, right? Because I've seen it where, you know, some heroes will have their shield break quicker than others, just based on obviously that hero's stats. So I'm hoping that's going to help the shield stay tankier. Um, and obviously it's going to increase their attack as well. Um, and this is just a straight increase in hero damage, so that's cool. Um, again, you guys might be able to tell me in the comments, but I don't know why you'd want this on on Suicide Fraudron. Like, there's no way you would want to have an increase in basic stats because you want it to be able to kill, be killed as easy as possible. Um, so that's very interesting. Maybe on Green Fraudron, you know. But I can't remember what his passive is and if he's even even worth worth it at all we'll check that at the, we'll check that at the end i think we'll, we'll have a quick look um actually i've got it i've got my game open let's have a look proudrin yeah it's the only one i've got prevents any heroes with combat class lower than hero the hero from filling up ultimate cage for two turns and pvp okay i think i see what they're trying to do there then because then it does the same thing as that's basically like a Ludo Holy Relic, right? Where it's designed to be like, okay, if you've got a lower combat class, you can't fill up your ultimate gauge. Uh, what is this? But he's, he cancels buffs, extorts. He's just not... Yeah, he's a, he's a support, right, to a demon team. I mean, maybe you could start to run him, I guess. I don't know. That might be interesting. I'll be interested to see some teams that will come out with that, but you obviously you don't want it on Suicide for Aldrin. Um Molescular, increase attack-related stats with allies with, revive, with the revival of so the by 30%, increase allies' basic stats by 3% for each ignite uh, apply to. Okay, so basically if they fall into the revival state, yeah, I remember, talk, I remember talking about this last time. Increase attack those stats, yeah. That's kind of cool, I guess. Like, basically, you become a, gla like a glass cannon at the revival state. That's kind of cool. That only really works for... Red Molascular, right? Surely. Wait, hold on. What's the point of having it on the... Molascular? Increase series basic stats for... By 1% for every orb in the ultimate gauges on the battlefield. Okay. Infects. Detonate. The end of the turn applies two ignites for every five turns on heroes who've not used a skill on PvP. Yep, same thing. Increase allies' basic stats of the hero's lifesteal. Yeah, but like. Yeah, it creates a barrier. So. What? No, it's it's really only this. It's only this. It's only red. It's only red molecular that that works with. Blaze is kind of. It's really this one that you kind of want, right? Because, and you want to use it with a ignite team. Very weird. I mean, it's only like these two are really only kind of specific for like one hero, right? Like they're only really. Uh, anyway, all right, moving on. Um, the hero's ultimate gauge is decreased, so the hero's skill uses decreased, increases allies basic stats by four six percent for each time ultimate gauge up to five times. So this is kind of cool. So you can create an increase of like thirty percent basic stats. Is this going to be better than you know someone like Omnis um, Templar Zeldris for PvP uh, or Festival Zeldris in the back? I don't know because how, how could this is take a while to like build up might be fun to try in pve but i don't know if that's going to make him viable in pvp i guess we'll find out um i obviously will be getting these as fast as possible and as quickly as possible uh those along with the rest of the dog mats um but i think this is definitely going to be my first choice here um yep you can you can pick again man like they're just anyway um they know what they're doing don't they uh you can pick her as a as a starting point uh you're gonna we're gonna have new kelak uh knighthood boss so i'll be doing a run of those as well uh you got all the new bundles you can buy um huge special ticket discount bundle yep all the usual stuff uh, bonus enhance yep and then hugely discount Discounted Skull and Hardy Completion Bundle. Okay, so you can buy a, buy a set of mats for another Holy Relic if you want to. That's actually kind of tempting. I don't really spend a lot of money, but that's really tempting. But I won't do that. Um, this is cool. You can select your artifact cards straight away. I really like that. 
Ah, oh, this is cool as well. It'll tell you how much currency you've got in each in each shop. That's really nice. Um, popular tab added to shop menu. The amount of following owned items sold in shop and display. Okay, cool. I like that. All right, sweet. And it shows you like what? Yeah, nice. Okay, cool. That's a nice little um, uh, uh, quality of life change is what I'm trying to say. Uh, suppression damage taken unique has been... Suppressed damage taken and removed. Okay, so they've made this a little bit easier as well. Oh, yeah, this is the... This is the um, damage cap. That's really nice. Um, I know that's been on JP already, and I was wondering why it was still a pain in the butt at the end of floor one. At the end of floor, yeah, floor one on Scotland Hardy, it's because it hasn't come to global yet. Okay, I'm really keen to see how this works because I think this is going to make life so much easier for the end of that first phase, uh, in that first floor, sorry. That's wicked. Okay, cool. Um, and then obviously you have the check-in event uh, for you checking in, right? So basically you get a free uh, Skull and Hardy relic. Um, so again, you probably want to spend this on um, what's-her-face, Thona, right? Uh, I was talking about in the last patch notes where I was like, oh, do I want to spend it on uh, King? But no, it's definitely going to have to be Thona, and then the other one, then the next one I'll get will be, will be King. But it'd be, be unfortunately, it'd be silly not to, not to get Thona's one. Um, yep, so again, all the way up to day 14 will give you the, the full set. Um, event rewards are given out based on order, based on the first day you logged in. So obviously, make sure you log in. I'll be doing it every day, but um, you know, I definitely would recommend doing this because um, it's just a free relic, right? And it's going to make your run so much easier. Cool. We've got the bingo events uh, until the thirteenth of the second. So obviously, this is going to run for about two weeks. Um, so this is usually pretty easy as long as you do your dailies and stuff. You'll be able to get through this pretty quickly. Um, Fort Sogras boss battle, event boss battle. Yep. Uh, main stage, Nighthawk boss battle. Yeah, okay, cool. So as long as you do yeah, 30 a day and 10 a day. Um, so and you can, yeah, perfect. Play various content in the game to get the Ragnarok tickets and selectors. Yeah, and you can actually do exchange for one gold thingy if you want to. Um, one gold thingy, yep, yeah, that makes sense. And then these are all your bingo rewards. Uh, you do get a costume for Freya. Random rewards. Cool. Um, step up mission event, total of six steps, yep, these are the different things that you want to do and all the different rewards you're going to get. We've been through this last time. Um, the rewards for, yeah, the rewards for each different, yeah, cool, these are the rewards for each different step. So, SR pendant, 10 SA coins, keen for that. Um, cool, hawk pass shop, normal rewards, extra rewards from the hawk pass special. Yep, if you buy it, standard, uh, Hawk Pass. Okay, cool. We're getting Merlin, Chandler, and I think that's... Oh, that's being... Oh, that's... Yeah, okay, so that's, these are the sale items. So these are all the new sale items. Um, but this is also... I think this is... Okay, so this is the new sale items for 1400 or you can buy the SSR ones for... Um, in the shop for, like, I think it's... Oh, 800? Yeah, that makes sense. I think 800, 900, something like that. 850, maybe? So you can get these ones. So I think it might actually be worth me just getting some of the Estorosa ones. Because um, I think that's just going to be a better choice for me. But maybe even Thonar, to be honest. My Thonar's not tanking at all in dogs. Maybe I'll do that. Um, cool. Secret Benefactor. Cool. And this is the um, the, the Fort Solver special one as well. Um, cool. And that's that, guys. So um, I did run over the banner in a previous uh previous video uh where is freya it's, it's a bit annoying that they don't actually where is the is it gonna show me the banner i'll bring it up real quick let's have a let's have a look um there you go you guys can do what i do and just cheat and go straight to google and just follow fire up reddit right here you go so this is the uh, banner that we're going to have. We're going to obviously have the new Freya, Sigurd, uh, Green Thronar, and Green Brunhild are going to be the special event ones. Um, I'm not going to be summoning on this banner, if I'm honest with you guys. I have all these heroes. Uh, I have decent-ish dupes. I've got 6 out of 6 here, 6 out of 6 here, 3 out of 6, 4 or 5 out of 6. Like, 
I'd love a, I'd love a six out of six Scardi and I'd love a six out of six Freya. I've got five six here and three six here, but not enough to be probably wasting gems. Like she's cool, but she's not. She's not a must summon, right? So I don't know. We'll see. I might need to draw a maybe maybe I'll do a couple of multis. We'll see, but. Um, yeah, I'm definitely not going to be investing in this banner, I don't think. So that's the banner as well, guys. Um, I'm really looking forward to this update. Can't wait to do a couple of tests on a few other things. And we'll obviously be showing you guys what I do every step of the way. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching again, and I will catch you in the next one.